Hello, my name is Nancy Strickland, and in the next seven minutes, I'm going to show you something about working with the on-screen keyboard, the SIP, in your Windows Phone Silverlight applications. SIP stands for Soft Input Panel, and it refers to this on-screen keyboard that slides up to let the user do text input. For example, it appears automatically whenever the user selects a text box by tapping on it. The standard layout's what you see here. It's a regular QWERTY character arrangement. To get the numbers and symbols, you hit this ampersand 1, 2, 3 key. There's also a backspace key over here on the lower left, but there's no delete key. So the user can input any standard character. It just might take extra keystrokes. You can make it easier for the user to input data by setting up the layout of the SIP keyboard to one that's specifically designed for a particular type of input. Here are some of the alternatives. Default is the standard QWERTY for any kind of text input, what we just saw. Text accepts regular text input, but it has autocorrect and it can provide text suggestions so the user can do their input faster and more accurately. If you select digits, the keyboard automatically starts with the numeric input layout displayed so the user doesn't have to switch to it. An email address here makes it easier for a user to input an email address. Let's look at a demo to see how you could use these. First of all, let me show you the default keyboard and how it works. I'm going to start a new standard phone app from the Silverlight Phone Templates. To get these templates, I did the setup that's described in the Getting Started video that's part of this series on MS Dev. Here's my basic starting project, and I'm going to add a text box. In the Properties window, I'm going to clear it out so there's no text in it when the app starts. And now I'm going to run it. It takes a little while to start the emulator and then load the app this first time, so I'm cutting a little time out here. Okay, there it is. Now when I click in the text box, the standard keyboard slides up from the bottom. I can click on the keys using my mouse. It's kind of noisy. Listen. If I want a capital letter, I click on the shift key here. And all the letters change to capitals. And then after I click on a key, they immediately change back to small. I can lock the caps key by double clicking it. I have a backspace key here, so I can delete. Now I'll hit the ampersand 1, 2, 3 key to change to the numbers and symbols keyboard. And this key here, the arrow, gives me another set of symbols. So that's the default keyboard. Now I'm going to change the layout in XAML so that the app opens with the digits layout instead. This is what you do if you want to start with one of the non-default special layouts and then use it throughout the app. I need to change the code so I'm going to minimize this but not close it and then stop debugging. Now in the designer, I'll make sure that the text box is selected because that selects it in the XAML. Then I'll go to the XAML for the text box and add an attribute. The input scope property of the text box controls the SIP keyboard layout. Now I'm going to run it so you can see how that works. This time when I click the text box, the keyboard that opens is set to accept digits. So this makes it a little easier on your user if you're expecting numeric input. If you want to change the layout dynamically, you do that in code. You do it whenever the logical context required it. For this demo, I'm going to use a couple of buttons to change the layout dynamically. Again, I'll minimize and I'll stop debugging. I'll drag two buttons onto the design surface. and I'm deliberately putting them up above the text box so that you can see how the phone handles it when the keyboard covers controls that are low down on the screen. I'm going to double click the first one here to create its click handler and I'll paste in this code. It instantiates an input scope object and then it instantiates a scope name with the property of text for its name value and it assigns that to the names collection of the scope. Now I'll go back to the design view and double click the other button. I'm going to copy and paste this same code, but I'm going to change the input scope name value so that you can see some of these values that you have for the layout. There's a lot of them. I'm going to pick email 
SMTP address. Now I'm ready to run it. Now I'm going to click in the text box and you can see that it's down so far on the screen that it would normally be covered up by the keyboard when it slides up. And it is for a second, but then the phone automatically scrolls the whole user screen up for you so that you can still see the text box. You do lose the title because it scrolls off the top. Now the numeric keyboard has come up because that's what we made the default in the XAML, but I'm now going to click this first button and then click in the text box again. Now the keyboard comes up in the QWERTY and notice that it's all caps to start. As soon as the first letter is typed, it automatically goes small again, so it auto-corrects to capitalize the first letter of your input. Now I'll hit the H and what happens here is that I start getting suggestions. I can click on one of them and the keyboard types it in for me. Now I'm going to enter Friday and I'm going to misspell it. When I hit the space after it, the phone immediately detects the misspelling and the fact that I didn't capitalize it and corrects it for me. So using this SIP layout speeds up the user input and makes it more accurate. Now I'm going to click the other button and then I'm going to click in the text box again. Notice there's some differences in this keyboard. I've got a .com key here and the at keys here, which I'd normally have to change to the other keyboard to get, so I can quickly type in an email. I'll type in the first few characters, then the at symbol, then the domain, and then the com. Using this alternate keyboard layout when you're asking your user to type in an email makes it easier on the user and it also makes your app look sharper and more professional. That was a quick look at manipulating the SIP layout in a Silverlight phone application. I'll put a copy of the code up on my blog for download and as I post new videos I announce them on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.